Hi. My name is Jay. Today we have Kristen and we have Annie. What basically happened is there is a, uh, a local historical place in uh, Vancouver that we went to and we just kind of walked around and checked it out. It's uh, kind of a local historical public park sort of area. And we just walked around one of the historical buildings, which happens to be an old hospital. And in doing so, uh, this was kind of my first experience with you, Annie, um, kind of learning a little bit about you and uh, as it relates to paranormal investigating. Um, and this is prior to me doing any sort of paranormal uh, research with you, um, only to find out, and I want to make sure this is set up correctly because I want to make sure you guys are comfortable talking about what it is you guys do when you're doing your paranormal research and your experiences. Um, <laughs> one of the things uh, I was really intrigued about when I took you to this place is that um, as a uh, person who's always who's experienced some of this stuff in the past, I'm always trying to apply common logic to what it is we've seen, what we've heard, what we might be experiencing, and so while not to discredit what it is you do or experience, I wanted to find out um, what sort of experience I would have with you while investigating a place. Just walking around, asking questions, getting kind of the vibe of the place. I am not sensitive in any way, shape, or form. You're sensitive. So. I am a sensitive man, <laughs> yes. I'm not really sure what our comfort level is in explaining where we went to. Um, it's a, I mean, it's a public place. It's a public place. One of my concerns with revealing locations is I don't want people to swamp a location um, or assume it's automatically haunted. Everybody's experiences are different. So one of the, the truly interesting things here is that uh, the first time we went and walked around and started asking some questions and just kind of getting a feel for the place, Kristen was not with us. Um, and in fact, Annie, I'll give you props because you did a really good job of making sure after we went and experienced the things we'd seen, uh, the things you'd felt, um, you would never talk about it in front of Kristen. No, like a good month or two? Oh, it was yeah. like two? Because yeah. that was Thanksgiving that you guys yeah. went. And it was, what, four weeks ago that we finally went? Yeah. 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 So what I'm really looking for when we brought you along is again, not to debunk something, but to find a similarity, something, a common tie, and you're not always gonna get that. You're gonna have, uh, you know, everything is perception. Um, but there were a couple of cool things that happened that even when I try to apply some logic to what it is we had. We tripped you up. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was tripping out. <laughs> Because it didn't make sense I think to we me. all tripped yeah, out. Yeah, I had to spend like two days recovering from that. I was so freaked yeah. out. <laughs> well, when we first got, get there, and because I didn't really know anybody well enough at the time to really just say, oh, hey, there's a dead person staring at you from the second floor window. <laughs> um, I just <laughs> went ahead. best friends. <laughs> yeah. Just, I was just like, I just went ahead and said it. Because there, I, what I saw when you faced the hospital was up in the top window was a man who looked like very sickly staring at me and that was my first like oh hey there's somebody there but then as soon as they saw jay it was like their attention went to him and only him I'm, and then I'm they a ignored pretty good looking me man so i could see how i would attract that yeah <laughs> and not only so uh again just to kind of give a description there was uh there were some outside decks and balconies that ran across the front or the first and the second floor now initially when the hospital was built they built them to be open air um, uh, areas where people could relax and enjoy the sunlight and then they found out gee Oregon Washington isn't really that cool for hanging out outside in the winter because it rains all the time so they enclosed everything in glass so it kind of looks like atrium uh, almost garden greenhouse type glassed areas that go around um, and one of the things you had mentioned was that in the second story it looked like uh, a bunch of people might have been there. Mm -hmm. They all um, stepped forward and just stared out through the window. Yeah, and to the glass, and it was more of like a, hey, someone's here, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Like, curious. Yeah. So we kind of walked around the building. Uh, there was one area off to the side where there was a side entrance. And we stepped right up, 
And we were there maybe a few seconds before I physically, out of the corner of my eye, saw you kind of startled, yeah. jump back. And uh, what was it you saw? It uh, looks box. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it terrified me, but it because where the door is, there's like these glass windows, and it looked like someone someone would have been ducked down behind the glass and just popped up like that. Yeah. And it made me jump. And it took me a while because you were like, "What would you see? What did you see?" And I was kind of wanting to make sure, like, wrap my mind around what I saw. Yeah. So I didn't say anything for a good, you know, thirty seconds. But... Yeah, but I knew something was going on. Yeah. I wanted to find out. <laughs> But you made it pretty evident that whoever was behind that door um, was almost kind of, I don't want to say controlling, but they influenced whatever else you felt in the building to stay back. Mm -hmm. Stay back. Uh, this was his area, and he was kind of in control of the situation. Yep. Um, after weeks and weeks of keeping this from you, um, because we wanted to find out what Kristen would experience, uh, we got Kristen there. And Kristen, why don't you go ahead and tell us what happened uh, when we got there. So I went with, well, what's interesting is we were on the car, it was Annie, Matt, and myself, and I'm driving around, and I jokingly, Matt was like, oh, do you see anything? Because <laughs> it's Matt. And I actually was getting drawn to uh, this one area on the side that was kind of like an alcove with a door in it. And I was like, yeah, actually, I already like picking up on something. And so we park and I, me and Annie go, I was like, I want to go here. So I took her there immediately. Um, cause you guys were kind of getting like little equipment set up and walking around and mm -hmm. taking pictures. And, uh, I'll, it's interesting because her and I kind of both experienced something when we walked up and you can tell them about when we walked up, what happened in terms of where we stopped. When, oh, we both, we were walking up the steps that lead to the back door and we both stopped at the same exact spot, which is the, it wasn't even close to the door. Yeah, that's it was just that ledge. We just stopped there and I like felt freaked out, but I was like, I was thinking in my head, I was thinking, oh, I'll let her go ahead and go towards the, the door. Cause I assumed you would have gone up, but you stayed. And then we both looked at each other. Yeah. Again, I, not talking. No, I never, Nobody no, has never talked. I, I never, I didn't know anything. And I, what I was explaining to Annie was that I felt like there was like this wall of energy that just hit me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I feel like we're too. being looked at. I don't want to, I was like, I don't even get close to this door. Like, I don't even want to know. And then, so we're standing there talking, kind of telling her what I'm sensing. And all of a sudden it just came in my mind and I just went, ooh. Oh, that's really, really creepy. And I'm actually getting goosebumps because I can see it so clearly. Mm -hmm. I was like, someone, and it, it's kind of cliche what you'd see in a movie, you know, but I was like, someone is ducking down in this window, in this door, and he's, I can see him, like when people come up, popping up, and people actually physically seeing this, and he's scaring the crap out of people, and he just pops up in that window. And she was doing a really good job of, like, not really giving me, like, oh, good. The visual feedback. Yeah, yeah so I didn't know. know. And I'm just talking. And she goes, well, you know, what is it a male or a female? And I, I was like, oh, it's definitely male. It's definitely male. And he was very, he was very, oppressive isn't the right word. But um, he was a force. You could, I mean, you, I feel like in life you kind of would have been like, oh, God, okay. Yeah. Um, but he had a very big presence and I uh, actually wanted to leave there pretty quickly. I was very, very uncomfortable with that area. And so Annie's like, well, let's go talk to Jay. Yeah, because the, I was waiting, the key word for me was if you said male. Yeah. I was waiting because I was, because I didn't tell you anything. When you said the popping up thing, that freaked me out. But I was like, okay, I'm going to wait till she says, till she says it's a male. And, I, and so I was like, kind of hoping you would. And when you did, I was like, all right, let's go. Let's go get the guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so that was like, the first area where her and I's experience like corroborated, but I, I at that point still didn't know yeah. that she had that experience yeah. at all. And then kind of stepping back from the building, you had the same thing where you said there's a bunch Yeah, of the second, people. when you're facing the entrance of the building, it's the second floor on the left, and I, I was seeing kind of maybe what would have been like residual energy, okay. except what was interesting was that they were aware and so it was like they were going, I could see people like sitting outside with like lunch trays and like nurses kind of leaning over, male and female, but they were like cognizant that, that we were standing there and they'd keep looking over 
And I was like, it's very odd because it feels like they're on replay, like a residual yeah. haunting would be. But there was an intelligence to it. Yeah. It was almost like they know they're dead, they know when other people are around, but they're just still carrying on with their everyday lives. Yeah. And I told her there was a lot of people, and I said I would feel very uncomfortable probably going in the building because I feel like there's a lot of people in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she didn't, and, and again, I didn't know that she had pinpointed that area. Yeah. So now the area we had gone to where you had felt the feeling um, was the exact same spot where Annie had felt it when we went the first time. Um, as someone who was asking a lot of questions, um, in fact, I kind of pulled a lot out of you individually one at a time uh, on both occasions just to try and paint the picture in my mind of what was going on. And one of the things that I find very interesting, and as someone who's trying to apply logic, is uh, your mind can paint a picture for you. You can go in and say, it looks like this is the type of area it would be, so here's what I'm going to assume is happening, right? Mm -hmm. So I can understand the scenario of wanting to envision that there would be a lot of people. Nurses. Nurses, people. things like that. The, the general aspect of what you would expect to see. What struck me... Uh, right off the get-go was that when we approached the one door you both had a very strong reaction to the idea of someone being directly behind the door hiding that would pop up and uh, you both had mentioned the feeling of someone who's kind of uh, I don't want to say aggressive because there was nothing that uh, there was no direct interaction those are people not spirits um, <laughs> Drunk people, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you guys had both gotten the impression that you were dealing with someone who uh, was trying to be in control, who uh, felt kind of dominant uh, of everything going on within the building. But you both gave small details that was a common thread between the two encounters. Uh, and that would be, uh, you know, obviously the people up on the second story. Uh, you both were drawn to the one entrance, and you both had given details about someone popping up behind the door. Well, and even when she told me, I didn't say anything to validate her at uh -huh. all, even at the time. I was waiting for the keyword male and the popping up, you know, in my head, and then I would, and you just told her what I experienced. Yeah, so it was weird, and you, he, you have that on film. Yep. Because I didn't know, so he's like, all right, I'll tell you. And it was, it was cool because he told me what Annie had told him, so it wasn't coming from Annie, because in that case, she can kind of, not that she would, but when you get excited, like, I'm guilty of this. I'll start going along with something. Huh, which is, yeah. Well, yeah, that's why I try to keep these things separate because there's no way that we can do that because we don't know what the other person went through. Yeah. And so he explained to me what she had told him, what she was seeing. And I, I mean, oh, it was yeah. so creepy and weird. Now, the first time we had gone and what I had personally experienced there, um, you know, given my level of investigating, it's very primitive, very <laughs> low level. Uh, you know, I hear a noise and I'm like, oh, it's got to be haunting. Um, what you and I, Annie, had experienced was this man, for some reason he kept staring at me. Uh, I don't understand that. Um, but he kept telling us to go to a different door. And then when we would go to that door, he'd say, no, go back to the other door. Mm -hmm. So we went to one door and we started asking a few questions. All we had was a K2 and a voice meter. And we set those down by the door. We made sure all of our phones and everything was off. And um, at this point, not being sensitive, I was just kind of like, ooh, it's a creepy building. What's going on here? I don't understand. And uh, we didn't get a single reading off of anything. Um, we stood by the door for a good 20 minutes asking questions. There was a lot of noise from the road, um, so I would imagine on audio it would have been hard to decipher anything. Mm -hmm. But um, we stood there for a good 15, 20 minutes asking questions. But at one point, uh, because nothing was happening as far as I was concerned, I looked at Annie and said, Annie, what are you getting? So you'd said, he wants me to, to put my hand on the door but I don't want to. And I said, well, what happens if I put my hand on the door? And you said, I don't know. So I reached up and the second my hand hit the door, the K2 spiked into the orange 
and it flickered there for a second and then it gradually fell again. And that was the only reading we got. Uh, you know, like I spoke with you today, there are times when, you know what, life is a lot more exciting and fun when you just let go and believe for a moment that you might have possibly encountered uh, a small piece of evidence. Um, but that was powerful for me, just because the second I hit the door, boom, it spiked. I thought it was cool because Annie and I had been talking leading up to this, and she, you know, you've never been validated before, like in terms of, and it is almost like being tested, but it's with, it, I understand not trying to call it testing because that implies pressure. Yeah. Um, but it was cool because I, we knew that it was going to be validation for both of us, but I know that it was a big deal for you because you've never had that. Mm -hmm. And so it was really cool. Um, well, had you ever had that before? I've had, I've had, had validation? several, okay. um, whether it's from other media, like people, like psychics. Um, I usually just pick up on a bigger picture, but I've had people validate things on investigations. And also, um, after I read a place, like historical research shows. No. Um, but I, I wanted this to be big for her because, and that's I felt like I was had to perform because I wanted her <laughs> to, <laughs> to like have something. Yeah. But I'm really glad that that she got to do that because that I know that's a big deal. Yeah. Well, and I like that, like, and with this experience, it kind of showed me that my abilities are different than yours, which is interesting because I thought, oh, I'm sensitive, I can talk to dead people, and I can see dead people, and then learning what you experience and what your gifts are, it's different than mine because I, I don't have the same thing as you. We're a good team. Yeah. And so it was kind of neat to have like two different sensitive abilities come together and validate each yeah. other, I thought. Yeah. In fact, there's a local uh, uh, paranormal investigator named Ben Robinson who uh, is the first one that kind of made me realize uh, who are we to say that someone doesn't have an ability. Um, just like in life, uh, when you're reading something, so much of it is a perception right? How you're reading something. Uh, we can both read the same book and have a completely different outcome from the exact same story. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the fact that we had that common thread was pretty cool. I was pretty excited to see that. Mm -hmm. But gosh, guys, we, uh, uh, I would love to go back and do more. Unfortunately, um, the public area we were in uh, does not want any sort of uh, access to provide access to anybody who can. Um, do any sort of thorough investigation with more equipment so we may never have the opportunity to uh, go inside this place and and really find out what's going on but it, you know what it would be interesting to go back uh, learn a little bit more of the history and in the public areas be able to uh, see if we can pick up more and we'll have to do that if not there at least other places because mm -hmm. that was pretty cool yep yeah so but anyway thanks guys and uh, and we'll have to go investigate, investigate some more. Investigate. Yeah. Investigate. <laughs> uh, we'll have to go investigate some other cool places and see if we can. Um, because one of the things that I do like about this is it. Uh, it sounds funny to say, but you want to give credibility to people that you genuinely feel have an ability to do something special. And um, while it may not be apparent uh, to viewers. Uh, it was definitely a situation that I was uh, impressed with. You can see the actual video where I'm revealing to Kristen for the first time what it is Annie saw. Yeah. And awesome. it's a little dark, but <laughs> by that... By the, yeah. well, I was really freaked out. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was really freaked out. As real as it gets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got Annie, Kristen, and Matt, and myself. Um, only because we'd had a couple scenarios we were talking with Annie about that were so fascinating. And before I tell you anything that she saw, uh, I kind of want to get some of the things that you kind of experienced while you were... Yeah, um, well, I'll start with what I saw over on the side. Through the side door, uh, I see the north side of the building. Yeah. And uh, when we were driving around, we took the wrong driveway. I said in the car to Matt and Annie, I said, oh, I already pick up something. And that was a spot I was, I just flashed in my mind. So that's where I took her when we first parked. I was like, let's go over there. And it's funny because I actually had a physical reaction. We walked up, we walked up the stairs, and I mean, she told me this after. 
she realized that we both stopped. She she had already been up there, I guess, and mm -hmm. she had her reasons, which I still don't know, but she stopped and I stopped at the same time. I just felt like there was this invisible barrier. Um, I immediately, like my, my heart, I don't even like, it, it was really creepy, it's like horror movie status. It was like someone was watching us from the shadows inside that main door. I told her first, I was like, I wouldn't even feel okay with going up to that door and maybe looking in. I would not feel okay with that. And I feel like there was a man, like at any second, I think he was there, but I mean like visually, I feel like he would have popped up and been in that window. Okay. And not in like a threatening way, but kind of in like a, hey, whoa, like you're, you're in our space. You're kind of, like, what are you doing here? Okay. So. Sorry, my hand's getting tired. I'm going to switch angles there. So I, I did not like, I didn't like it up there at all. I just felt like we were being watched by a couple different angles. Like the man in the door was not very pleased that we were there. And I was not, I, if someone asked me to go touch, like touch the door and look in, I would have said no. Like there's no way I would do that. Not at all. Maybe for like 40 bucks because I'm broke. Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, um, and then just to, sorry, my hand is not working with the camera well. Um, Annie, I want to verify because she said a couple things in there that I kind of got want to go. Oh, that could relate to something. Um, you told her nothing I about told this. Her absolutely nothing. Uh, about any part of the building. Nope. Okay. Um, do you pick up anything? Uh, granted, you haven't really walked around the whole. Th oh, you did. Yeah, is it locked did. over there it now? Is, yeah. I figured so. <laughs> they they caught on. Um, did you sense anything from any other part? Yeah. Okay. Um, here very much in particular I I'm, I told her I was like I don't even want to look at it I feel like we're gonna see something visual I feel like the inside of there is just like buzzing with just the activity of what used to go on so you call that residual but they're they're aware like I, I just I feel like I'm gonna see a male a white male nurse like wheeling someone and then just stop and look at us like what are you doing um, I can see people like sitting in wheelchairs and chairs having like their lunch maybe and like nurses are leaning over them and helping them but it's all on the second level here um, and for some reason I can't figure out why that window right here drew my attention yeah. I can't I don't know why though I, again I feel like I feel like we're being watched super hardcore and it and it's not a good feeling and they're not it's not malicious but it is kind of like well this is our space what, what are you doing here? No. Um, might be a female that is in that room, but not a nurse. Um, but I just... See, I wonder if I can see that in the video of, over behind us. Probably not. It's too dark. But there's a, a brick section to the building back there with a, a couple windows way up high. And I feel like it would just be one of those things where, like, she's just doing her business up there. Mm -hmm. And she just, you would see a woman just kind of, like, peek out the window and be like, huh, that's weird. Why are they here? But like, she's not alive. Yeah. Um, I, I'm really, I, I, don't, I don't like looking at this section. It's like the door, but that was, that was just like physical reaction over there. It was really yeah. weird. This isn't so much a physical reaction. This is just like, they know we're here and I'm just, I'm not ready to actually like see something. Yeah. I can see it, but like, I am. In your mind. I bet out. if we sat here for an hour or two, we would see someone. We would see something. Okay. So now, um. What I'm going to do is tell you what my experience was from Annie's communicating level. There may have been some things she didn't share with me. I don't know. And the reason I want to uh, share what she shared with us at the time uh, is to hit on a few key aspects uh, that are kind of important to know. Can I just say really quick? Yep. That middle doorway or window, whatever that is, I like some new on this level or no, like the, the, the top door? Oh, like the second level of the light. And that, that middle, where it looks like a half door almost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I right. feel like someone like looks right there. Okay. Okay. Sorry, keep no, going. No, that's okay, keep going. So one of the fascinating things, uh, you know, if I take off my hat, you can actually see me. I'm not in the dark. I've got a glare now. <laughs> I kind of brighten up everyone now. Like that guy from V for Vendetta. Yeah. <laughs> um, we drove up here and we got out and uh, Annie, as you know, is not always forthcoming with everything. Sometimes you have to uh, ask her questions and things because she's at times not fully comfortable divulging everything she feels. But there were times when you could see a physical reaction to something, almost like a startling. Yeah, well, that's, that's 
That's why I had to verbalize what yeah. I was seeing because it's So uh, the first thing she that I recall at the time was when we pulled up, we all got out. She sensed people on the second floors all kind of coming up to kind of say, hey, what's going on out there? Who's well, here? What's it, going and on? Thing, it sounds cliche, but it's like the ghost in the window thing. Yeah. Hardcore here. Okay. It's super creepy. Um, what's actually extremely fascinating is we went around to the side and we stood by the door and a few times she was startled because a man would pop up in front of the window. You saw the same action? I said, I was like, it's like a horror movie where it's like, Wee! like that's She what... was uncomfortable with this man over there. She did not, he, she said he doesn't want, he's ignoring me. Uh, apparently at the time he would stare at me, at me. Um, oh, I can see him, yeah. And she, while she would ask him questions, he would always, in a way, respond as if he was ignoring her, but answering while staring at me. And it was almost like a feeling she got, not a direct answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so one of the things that uh, we got, and it's too bad we can't what get was back that? there. What? I saw a flash of light. I would have said it was lightning. I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye, too. I mean, it looked like a flash of light, like a camera flash. Right up in that room I was talking about. Yeah. I've got, uh, I don't want to look at it anymore. The other thing you mentioned, which is why I asked if you discussed any of this, is because you mentioned something about touching the door. You didn't want to touch. Well, the reason, I'm, it, it, yeah. I, you know, when you like kind of peer in a door, you put your, you know, you, I felt like if I even got, I, I, horror movie style, he would pop out and be face to face with me. And I'm talking like, like physical see a man. That I'm, is exactly what she and described. that's what I told her. I was like, he's going to pop up like a horror movie. That's what he did. He didn't approach the door. No. What we were, when we were oh, here, so we were standing there, and all of a sudden, I was very slight. She just kind of went, oh. and I said, what are you getting? What do you got? And she said, he literally just popped right up and is standing right there. I recorded us talking about oh, this. Yeah. Because I, that's the words I used. So anyway, that's uh, the experience so far, and I just wanted to... Uh, again, not using this to disprove. In fact, one of the things I really appreciated about Ben uh, in talking with Ben candidly is he said he's kind of uh, instilled in me because I like the advice. He says, just because someone experiences a different story does not mean any one person is wrong. Exactly. And they may see something completely different. But no, no, <laughs> but actually uh, for you both to be uh, aware of this, this is the first time I have heard two completely separate stories that were so closely matched with the descriptive of a single entity. So that guy, yeah. Well, I don't want to go back over there. Like, he, he, yeah. But that second floor, man, I feel like, I feel like. And it's, it was nice to actually hear you describe a nurse because he wouldn't let me see anybody else. You just see a nurse, but she, it's just like she's standing in like in a see, void. See, a like, nurse started to come forward over there and then he was like, Nope. See, I feel like he was a patient. I didn't feel like he I feel like mm. he was a patient. I anyway, tune it like... out for now. I think we yeah. got uh, most of the information set.